Hey, in this tutorial, we'll be creating the shiny looking chrome type all in After Effects and with no plugins. Okay, so let's create a new composition. Let's call it text pre, and I'm gonna make it square, 25 frames per second and five seconds long. Now let's select the type tool and create some text. And let's use the align tool to center it. Now I'm going to scale it up so it fills the frame a bit more and then stretch it vertically too. Now to get that really extreme stretch look, we're going to apply the transform effect and then only affect the lower part of our text by using a mask. Let's go to effect, distort, transform. Then let's deselect uniform scale and increase the scale height. Now let's select the rectangle mask tool and draw a mask around the bottom half of our text. Then let's select our text layer and hit E to reveal our effects and inside the transform effect hit the plus sign next to the compositing options. And now the transform effect will be only constrained to the mask. Now we just need to tweak the position of the mask so that the edges match up. Now as you can see our text is sitting a bit too near to the bottom so let's move the text layer up and then tweak the position or anchor point of the transform effect so that it all lines up again. Okay, now this is looking good as it is, but it's a little bit too chunky. So we can go to Effect, Matte, Simple Choker, and increase the choke amount to reduce the thickness of the letters. And finally, to make the form of our letters feel a bit more random, we can add a Turbulent Displace, which will help give them a nice wavy look. By tweaking the amount and the size, you can vary how much we distort the text. And I found leaving the size at 100 and dropping the amount to 30 works well here. Okay, so now we have our text, let's drop it into a new comp and we'll call it Chrome Pre. To build the Chrome look, we're going to need a gradient texture map. So let's create another new comp and this time we'll call this one Gradient Pre. Let's create a new solid and I'm just going to call it Grad for gradient. And I'm going to use Fractal Noise to create our gradient map. So go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. Now instead of this noise pattern, we want something that resembles streaks and that will help create a nice looking chrome effect. So we can go to the transform box and deselect uniform scaling and now scale the height until we get some nice streaks. Then let's go and increase the contrast as having a nice variety of dark and light areas will really help sell the effect. Now let's bring the gradient pre-comp into our chrome pre-comp and we can hide the text layer. And then let's just rename the gradient to chrome. Now to create the base metal effect, we're going to start off by applying CC Glass. So go to Effect, Stylize, CC Glass. Now CC Glass helps create a glass look by applying shading based on a bump map that you can define. So we're going to use the gradient map itself as the bump layer. So make sure this is set to this layer. Now if we tweak the softness, height and displacement values, we can create a really nice looking metallic look. And I found by leaving softness to 20, height to 50, and displacement to 250, we get great effects, but it won't create too much distortion later when we come to add some color. Then under lights, we set this to use AE lights as we'll be adding some lights to our scene in a little bit. Then finally in shading, let's just leave everything default apart from specular, which we can increase to 100 and this will just create stronger highlights. Next, we're gonna add CC Blobby Lies, which is in the distort category. And CC Blobby Lies is gonna give us a nice curvy metal look. So first let's set the blob layer to our text pre-comp layer. And then we just need to change the property to alpha instead of lightness. Then the softness controls how blobby the contours of the shading will look. And the cutaway tweaks the size of the alpha channel. So we just need to basically play with these values until we get a look that we like. Okay, that's looking nice. Now let's again set the light to be using AE lights. And for the shading, we can leave it all as default for now. Okay, so now let's add some lights to our scene. So let's go to layer, lights. And I'm gonna use a parallel light, um, making sure it's white, and I've set the intensity to 150%. And straight away, you'll see if we move the point of interest around, we get some really nice lighting effects on our text. So this first light, I'm gonna to move to the top left of the text and move the point of interest so that we get some nice dramatic looking lighting. Then let's duplicate this light and we'll move it over to the right side of the text. And again, we can play with the position of the point of interest until we get a look that we like. Now, a quick and easy way to be able to move these lights around is to parent them to a null. So let's create a new null and we'll call it light control. Make it 3D and then we'll parent our two lights to it. 
And now we can rotate and move our nod around to easily control the lighting on the text. And of course we can animate it. So let's go to the start of our timeline and rotate the null around the y-axis until the lights are behind our text, making everything go black. Then let's go forward one second and rotate the null back until we get some light being cast on our text. Next, I'm going to move forward to around four seconds and rotate the null around so that the lights are sort of in the opposite position. And then finally, I'll go to the end of our timeline and rotate the null even further until the lights are back behind the text again, making our text black. Now let's jump into the graph editor to make this rotation nice and smooth. So select the first keyframe and we'll set this to easy ease. The second keyframe, we'll set that to easy ease in. The third keyframe, we'll set to easy ease out. And the last keyframe, we can set to easy ease. Then we just need to tweak the handles to make this line nice and smooth. Great, now we can play this back and see how it looks. And as it's quite a heavy effect, we can set this to half resolution. Okay, this is looking good and is a great base for us to start adding some color. So to add the color, we're gonna be making tweaks inside our gradient pre-comp. And to make things a lot easier, we can open two comp windows at once so we can see what the changes we make to our gradient are doing to our text. So to do this, just click this padlock here to lock this window and then go to our gradient pre and we'll just drag this window to the side. Now to add the color, I'm going to use Colorama as it will allow us to assign color values to the different luminance values we have from our fractal noise. So effect, color correction, Colorama. And straight away you see we get this crazy effect. So if we jump into the effect settings, you'll be able to see what's going on. So we're defining an input value here, which in this case is the intensity, and then mapping some color values to the input based on the output cycle here. And you'll see that Colorama has some great presets already for this output cycle that once applied will give us some really cool effects. But for this, I'm just gonna define my own colors using the hue cycle as a starting point. So now we can just go into these colors on the wheel and set what colors we want to, want to appear within our text. I found by alternating between dark and lighter shades, you can get a really nice metallic effect. You may also find that once you've defined the colors that you don't like the look of certain areas of the text. So you can jump back into the fractal noise and play with the evolution and the contrast and brightness settings to refine the look. Okay, so now let's go back into our Chrome pre-comp and make some color adjustments to increase the metallic look of the text. So I'm gonna add a Lumetri effect and first increase the contrast to give the color of a text some more depth. Then we can boost the highlights a little bit more, drop the shadows a tad and then boost the saturation. But essentially, we just wanna play with these settings until we get a really nice psychedelic metallic look. Another thing we can do is add a Unsharp Mask effect. So go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and Sharp Mask. And what this is gonna do is add some extra sharpness and definition to the color bands in our gradient. And we can increase this amount until we get a look that we like. Okay, so this is looking good. So now let's add some final bells and whistles. And I'm gonna drag our Chrome pre-comp into a new comp, and I'm gonna call it Chrome Main. Now the first thing I'm going to do is create a black background. So let's create a new solid and we'll call it BG. Now let's add some glow. So let's create a adjustment layer and call it glow. Then go to effect, stylize glow. And we're actually going to use two instances of glow for this. So on the first one, let's reduce the threshold to around 20% so that more of the colors in our text will glow. Then we'll increase the radius to around 60 and drop the intensity quite low to around 0.3. Now let's duplicate this and this time let's increase the threshold to around 80% and increase the intensity and radius until we get this really nice soft big glow around our text. Another thing we can do is add some nice highlight flares. So let's duplicate our chrome text layer and first we just need to isolate the bright parts of our text. So go to obsolete and luma key and we'll leave it set to key out darker and then we just increase the threshold until we're left with only the highlights. Now go to effect, blur and sharpen and CC cross blur. 
So let's increase the radius of both X and Y to around 200. Then we can just de-isolate our other layers and set the blending mode of our glare layer to add. Then finally, let's just add another glow to give this a little bit more of a boost. And then to refine the look, if you want, you can jump back into the Luma key effect and we can just tweak the threshold, which will easily alter how much of the glare effect we get. Next, I'm just going to add some noise. So we'll create a new adjustment layer and then add a noise effect. And we'll just set this to around 5%. And finally, let's just do a slight bit of color correction. So I'll create another new adjustment layer and we'll add a curves. And I'm just gonna bring everything down a little bit so it's not quite so bright. And then I'm gonna add a hue and saturation effect just to tweak the hue so it's a little bit more blue. Okay, and there we go. And now that we've got the base effect built, it's really easy to jump into the gradient pre-comp layer and tweak the gradient map to be able to get all sorts of different metallic looks. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you like this tutorial, then why not check out my Neon Text tutorial. Thank you and see you next time.